the black nights. Go not to the mounds on moonless nights. Seek not the dead to rise. Risk not the wrath that sleeps and dreams. Heed the words of the wise. A chorus from a traditional empire peasant song. The black nights are the horrific reanimated corpses of long-dead tribal chieftains and prime evil knights who were raised from their resting place by necromancers and vampires. In the times before the empire, there were few domesticated horses, and horsemen were exceedingly rare. In most tribes, a steed was a symbol of wealth and status, so it was often that only a chieftain and his closest warriors would ride mounted into battle. The wealthiest of their number, clad in crude iron plate and carrying stout shields. When these early knights died, their horses were ritually killed and buried in the burrows alongside their masters so that they may carry their deceased master into the afterlife. Many centuries later, the vampire counts are known to summon forth the gruesome remains of these ancient knights in order to bolster the ranks of lesser undead minions under their control. As a vampire stalks through burrows and mausoleums, dark magic swirls invisibly around him like a cloak probing and penetrating the cracked and overgrown porticoes of each resting place and saturating the bones of the armoured corpses within. Without the blessings of more to protect them, these corpses are at the mercy of the vampire. A thousand years of dust shifts and dissipates as the parchment dry skeletal corpses twitch and sit upright, in a morbid mockery of their old lives, these black knights stir into motion. Alongside them, the skeletal remains of their steeds jerk to unlife as well, twisted by magic into hellish mockeries of the noble beasts they once were. Outside the burrow, the vampire would then split open the resting place of his new servants with a deafening crack. At his word, fully formed black knights ride pell-mell from the tumble-down ruins of their tombs, whole units of warrior horsemen arrayed in the corroded armour of a bygone age. When called into battle, black knights would often form into squadrons of powerful shock cavalry. During their mortal lives, these unearthly knights used weapons bearing enchantments of destruction, Though corrupted by the patina of the ages, these tools of slaughter are no less potent than when the wielder was a man of flesh and blood. It is said that once someone is pierced by a black knight's lance or sword, the wound it creates would never recover. As well as enchanted weapons, the Black Knight's steeds are said to be trapped between worlds due to the ritual that binds the steed to its master. As such, there have been reports of Black Knights galloping straight through the rubble of ruined cities, or even charging across the surface of a lake without leaving so much as a ripple. With these advantages, these unliving cavaliers would then crash themselves headlong into the ranks of their still-living enemies, spitting their foes on lances wreathed in cold flame, and lashing out with heavy swords older than the Empire itself. And next up, the mighty Blood Knights. There are armor-clad vampire knights in the world, pursuing their martial glories with deathless vigor. Most famous are the blood dragons, but not all the deadly horsemen of the old world were trained within blood to keep. Blood knights, also known as vampire knights, are among the most fearsome cavalry in all of the old world, first created by the mightiest vampire, Aborash. 
In Bretonia, there is a breed of vampire that shares many of the characteristics of the aristocratic breed, though by no means are they contained by the borders of that foolish land. They are warriors, dedicated to perfecting their craft and exulting in the power vampirism affords. Single-minded in their intensity, they are bold, arrogant, and thoroughly vicious. From Maximilien Sommers, a knight of the Empire. Their training and discipline in life is enhanced by the unnatural speed and strength of the vampiric curse. Blood knights are nigh indestructible, riding with fangs bared through storms of arrow and shot. Such is their honour that they can refuse no martial challenge, and will fight at the forefront of an undead army without question. It is said that even the fabled Grail Knights of Britonia cannot match the Blood Knights lance for lance upon the field. Nevertheless, such beings are a deadly anathema to the creatures of the night, and simply being near them can induce great pain and weakness. A Blood Knight's armour is encrusted with images of death and slaughter, their blades are fell weapons inscribed with dark runes, chased with precious muscles and fashioned in the likenesses of evil beasts. The knights do not ride mortal steeds, but charge across the field upon evil nightmares that are clad in thick barding painted with disturbing icons of necromantic power. To blood knights, every human in the world can be broken down into two categories, a worthy opponent or a training dummy. The only time a blood knight might show mercy is if he encountered an opponent who has great potential to one day be a worthy opponent. It may be better to let such a mortal become something interesting rather than snuff him out with the rest of the vermin. Despite their aloof nature and singular obsession, they sometimes attract followers. If a blood knight finds fame with his particular approach to the quest or a devastating new combat style, others may flock to imitate and learn. So it is that new orders spring up or take root in already existing orders or organizations. The infamous Red Duke of Aquitaine was such a creature, beginning as a low knight but ending up with an entire army at his command, both mortal and immortal, as word of his martial skills spread across Britonia. The Knights of Virana were a mortal order of Estalian knights, until their Grand Master concluded that the techniques of Aborash far outstripped those of Mermidia, and brought his whole unit into the darkness to join him. And there are many more such groups, small and large. The rest are lone hunters, renegades and vagabond knights who roam the old world alone and unaided. Sometimes they are found guarding remote bridges or fords, testing all that would cross in mortal combat. Others live an austere existence in high mountain fortresses or secret caves, perhaps training those who have the tenacity to seek them out, or perhaps just killing them for food. Alternatively, they may hide amongst humans, mixing with the noble classes or slipping amongst the ranks of knightly or monastic orders. A blood knight will be anyone, as long as it allows him to practice his sword play and feed when needed. It is not uncommon to find a blood knight brotherhood housed within the stronghold of a vampire lord. Among the dread towers and gargoyles of Sylvanius castles are its keeps, the sanctuaries from where a lord will entertain his allies or unwary mortals, and make his fell plans for domination of the living. The midnight aristocracy are of noble stock, and so enjoy doing what nobles tend to do, entertain and plot. And now, some of the most notable Blood Knight Orders. The Blood Knights are nigh indestructible, 
and their thirst for blood makes them ferocious and implacable. There are few tales to tell of their existence, for those who see them often, die of fright or worse, find themselves skewered on a wicked lance and hauled into the air before the fangs of the waiting blood knight. First up, the blood dragons. The most infamous order of blood knights were easily the order of the blood dragon. Centuries ago, the people of the empire would have named the knights of the order of the blood dragon among the noblest of warriors defending their lands. Their great fortress, Blood Keep, garnered the passes to Britonia and was famed for the strength of its walls and the valour of its defenders. Then, the Drakenhof Templars. The original Drakenhof Templars were a genuine knightly order, founded long before Otto von Drak was usurped by Vlad von Karstein. They had the noble goal of driving the darkness out of Sylvania. Needless to say, they failed, and Conrad von Karstein himself tore the last Grand Master apart hundreds of years before the end times. There were several iterations of the order, for Vlad and his heirs were ever imitators of human tradition, and the most recent incarnation of the order was comprised of vampires considered unworthy to bear the von Karstein name. The order was considered to be the greatest outside of the blood keep itself. The Knights of the Red Death None were more bloodthirsty or more merciless than the Knights of the Red Death. These vampire fiends were the butchers behind the massacre of Modruin and the slaughter of every living soul in the siege of the walled town of Ostwald. The vampire Gorgovich Krakwald rode at the fore of these knights, and their standard was emblazoned with a representation of Krakwald Castle. The Deaf Guard the Blood Knights of the Sea are elite, armor-clad sentries to the dreaded seafaring creatures of the night. They act as elite infantry troops within the undead fleet of the vampire pirate Luthor Harkon. The Seneschals Each a fearsome, dark champion in their own right, these knights were the ancient protectors of Duke Merovech of Moussillon clad in archaic, serrated plate armour, and wielding powerful weapons of darkness. Their deeds were immortalised on murals across Moussillon. Many of these fearsome warriors were slain by the Grail Knight, Calar of Garamon, along with their dark master. The Knights of the Black Grail a mysterious group of blood knights who replaced the seneschals, acting as the personal knights of Malobod during the Bretonian Civil War. They are not to be confused with the more infamous Black Grail knights. And at last, the Knights of Irana, originally a mortal order of Istalian knights dedicated to Mamidia. This changed when their Grand Master concluded that the martial techniques of Aborash far outstripped those taught to the knights by the cult of Mermidia. In search of this superiority, the Grand Master of the Knights of Irana brought his whole order willingly into the eternal darkness of undeath to join him in the search for true perfection. And of course, some of the most legendary blood knights. First up, the Red Duke, also known as the Scourge of Aquitaine. He was a former Duke of Aquitaine. Initially slain by King Louis the Righteous, he returned centuries later to defile his former dukedom. Malobord, the bastard son of King Louis Leoncoeur and self-appointed Duke of Moussillon. And, of course, Conrad von Karstein, the insane and bloody executioner of Vlad von Karstein, who later rose to lead Sylvania against the Empire. And next, the final cavalry unit, the Hex Race. You can't fight them, 
and it's a struggle not to flee in horror from them. You just have to hope your commander and his champions really are the holy knights they aspire to be, and that maybe they'll be able to hurt the creatures. From Alphonse, a Bretonian man-at-arms. Hex race, also known as Reaper Knights, are a type of wraith, ethereal spirits born from the depths of the underworld, sent forth into the world of the living to hunt down those evil men who would dare to defy their fate and the will of the Death God. The first sightings of the Hex race are shrouded in mystery, but it is said that they are created on the cursed night of Hexensnacht, the first day of the new year, tearing their way into the mortal realm from the bowels of the underworld. The hex race's shade-like existence leaves it with a hunger that only the sucker of a damned soul can sate. Once the curse of the hex race has been laid upon their prey, there can be no escape. The spectral horsemen can hurtle across rivers and pass through mountain sides on their incorporeal steeds without slowing their headlong charge. Ironically, however, in their rush to hunt down these damned souls, they would inevitably become lured into a trap, from which a powerful necromancer will bind these servants of the Death God into his will. Hex race are able to move from the realm of spirits to the mortal world and back again at will. They share many similarities with Cairn race, though they are not bound to places of death and grief, but instead are able to roam freely. The skith-like weapons they use to slay their prey would be lethal enough in the material realm, but because the hex race shimmer between worlds, their spirit skiffs are able to pass through gromril, armor or scaled dragon hide without hindrance. A single blow from a spirit skith can snatch away a mortal's essence whilst leaving his physical form completely unharmed. It is these strange weapons that earn the Hex race their nickname of the Reaper Knights, for they harvest the souls of the living just as a farmer reaps his crop. A soul taken by a Hex wraith does not dissipate altogether, but is instead absorbed by the spectre that took it. These dread reapers hence burn with flickering flame, all that is left of the horrifying spirits they have stolen from the mortal realm. The arcane bloodline of the Necrarchs were the first to bind hex rays into their armies. Some say they've learned the art of their summoning from the stolen book of Arcan, while others say that the legendary Melchior was the first to master their control. In recent years, however, they have been seen in undead armies from all across the known world. When bound into a vampire service and commanded by their hell wraith leaders to ride into battle, whole packs of these apparitions hurtle across the field, plunging headlong through the swiftly dwindling ranks of the foe. In recent years, the vampires of Sylvania have learned to bind these creatures of shadow to their service, using them as weapons of war. The sight of a pack of cackling hex rays approaching fast, spirit skiffs held high, and unnatural soul fires flickering from their eye sockets is enough to chill the blood of even the most seasoned warrior and send them fleeing. Able to glide through all physical obstacles, whether it be stone, fire, or flesh, these hex rays could not be defeated by simple mortal weapons. It is only with faith and the use of magical spells and items that one would have any chance of harming a hex wraith in combat. It is small wonder that these deathly riders are amongst the most feared of all the minions of the vampire counts.